So in this video, I'm going to talk to you regarding <coughs> how to perform kernel density estimation in uh, Python. So we're going to take a Jupyter Notebook and, and I will take an example to understand uh, what is kernel density, how is it estimated and how you can use kernel density estimation in data analysis. It is used in many areas. It is used for simple data analysis, uh, but also more sophisticated data analysis such as machine learning and, and financial e uh, econometrics or, and even in quantitative finance it is quite uh, quite used um, all right so we will uh, first import some important uh, libraries uh, for numerical calculation we need numpy so we uh, import that we also <coughs> import matplotlib for plotting purpose and we will um, import kernel density from scikit-learn okay and uh, to begin with we'll take a uh, sample data you can import data set from excel you can take real data also but uh, uh, yeah we are creating some synthetic data that means artificial data um, some random data uh, using <coughs> yeah using numpy and uh, yeah we are making sure it is normally distributed but i mean there's no hard and fast rule as such uh, you can you can have any data and and perform an, uh, a kernel density estimation on that you don't have to have only normal data but for this example we take uh, some data that is normally distributed uh, this is how the data looks like uh, but we would like to put that in some form which is you know usable in scikit learn so we just use this uh, resave function so that it is in in just one one particular column right uh, the data is in in one particular column right okay now uh, <coughs> we have imported kernel density from scikit-learn right we can directly use this to get the kernel density estimation right but before that a bit about kernel density and as to what it is and where is it used and what are the different types of kernel density well um, well kernel density estimation is is a non parametric way of estimating probability function you can fit probability distributions different probability functions to different kind of data right whether it's bernoulli binomial uh, yeah portion and and so on and so forth um, but can you do non parametrically because the ones that I mentioned are parametric probability function that means you have parameters if you have this value of the parameter you can reproduce the data but sometimes that's not easy the parametric functions do not fit the data well right uh, and sometimes uh, you may want to do some quick and dirty analysis and you don't have time to perform parametric analysis which is a bit more sophisticated you really need to understand that properly test is properly and then you can say anything about that estimation in that scenario also you can use kernel density estimation to quickly fit something uh, to the data right um, one way to do is to just to have histogram and based on that you you yeah yeah, yeah you understand the distribution of the data you can even do uh, forecasting based on that but kernel density smoothens the histo histogram right it's a better form of histogram histogram is perhaps the easiest form of fitting something to the data whereas kernel density uh, is uh, a better version of histogram and there are varieties of kernel density estimations uh, depending on the type of the data depending on what you are trying to do you use a given type of kernel density estimation okay so it's a non parametric that means <coughs> there is no parameter as such like in normal distribution you have mu and sigma as parameters in a linear regression you have alphas and betas as parameter here you don't have any parameter as such okay that means you cannot write a mathematical function just to you know put something right it, it, it's non parametric you know as the name suggests it's used to smoothen the data right so smoothing is used in many areas um, kernel smoothing this is called kernel smoothing you have 
many other types of smoothing techniques also right exponential smoothing and simple moving average smoothing right but kernel smoothing is also uh, one way of smoothing your data you can use that also for forecasting right a simple way of forecasting uh, as i have said it's alternate to alternative to histograms uh, but you can also use other types of uh, uh, yeah various other types of things such as uh, KDE plots and so on. There are various types of KDE plots also. It's used in data exploration primarily, um, but it's also used to you know represent uh, data in more continuous forms. For visualization purpose also, we we use uh, kernel des density plots. It's also used in outlier disk detections, and it's also so how outlier detections. So if you're performing some analysis and you want to see actually how many of these observations are too far from the mean and median and you know these averages, a kernel density estimation uh, plot is a very suitable one. In machine learning also it is used for feature engineering. Uh, you based on the kernel density plot you can see whether you can create more number of features from this variable or not. Right? That's also possible. People do use this for dummy variable creation also. Okay, so let us now see how you can do that. We have the kernel density function here. As I've said, there are various types of kernel you can use. Gaussian kernel is very popular, but there are also other types of kernel, such as the cosine kernel. Depending on what you want, you choose uh, the estimation, uh, the, the, the type of the kernel. And you can also try all of all the possible options and see which one fits your data the best and then choose the one right okay and then we fit the data okay now we have fit the data um we need to then visualize this right okay so when we visualize this so this is the kernel right the red mark this is the smooth uh, curve that is made out of this data. You also see the histogram, but see the comparison. This is much smoother compared to the histograms. And whether the kernel density estimate, the KDE plot fits your data or not, you can see by comparing it with the histograms. Only problem I see here is that here you see some sort of a, here uh, the depth is is it's bit higher whereas you know the the it doesn't fit that well also i see some spikes here but you know it, it's uh, not that um, pointed so maybe that's also another issue we can try it to other kernels right cosine kernel we will try okay same syntax We'll use kernel density from scikit-learn and we'll fit that to the data same data and let us run this okay and then we will run again to plot it but now this time with kernel of cosine right you see this fits slightly better right you compare that with this one it's not able to cover the spikes also the the uh, lower part also it's not able to cover properly whereas cosine does a better job so if i have to choose one of the kernel between gaussian and cosine i will choose cosine okay there are many other types of kernel also for example you have gaussian uh, i'm not able to pronounce this properly but okay this is the one okay top hat linear kernel is also there okay we use the same syntax the same code except that we will um, plot for all these five options for kernels right and see which one fits the best from the visualization plot itself you can you can find out which one fits your data the best okay now we run this and we we see uh, which one fits the best? Um, in my view, 
I think the the one which is linear fits the best. Cosine and linear are the ones actually that fits the data the the best, right? So we, we use either of them, either linear or or cosine, right? Uh, remember that you don't have to have only uh, normal uh, then distributions data with normal distribution. You can have any sort of data, and you can still fit. A kernel density to that all right and this is also quite useful in exploratory data analysis uh, if we're uh, having uh, you know visualization plots it's easy to understand the distribution of the data through uh, this this smooth graphs uh, KDE plots than just the histograms okay so that uh, therefore it is better you can also use this for uh, <coughs> a lot of other purposes for example um but you know you can use this for forecasting purposes also right this non parametric models are there for forecasting kde is one simple way of uh fitting a, a function a probability function to the data and uh, that's how you can also predict the you know the, do the predictions future predictions okay Thanks so much. If you have questions, do not hesitate to ask me in the comment section. I will try to respond to them. Thank you. See you in another video.